Hi all. We're going to look at another instructive game by the Zmeshnov today, and here the central theme is the King Hunt. So the Zmeshnov was black against Lev Polgiavsky in the 1958 Sochi 28th RSFSR Championship. So d4 was played, and Nezhmetsinov played knight f6. And after c4, we see d6. So an Indian system is the background to this king hunt game. After knight c3, black plays e5, not fearing the exchange of queens. That's a known safe line. So white plays e4, and Nezhmetsinov plays e takes d4. After queen takes d4, knight c6, gaining a tempo on the white queen. However, perhaps this is a little bit controversial because white has this nice d5 square and black will have to waste time playing c6 later. After g6, we see that black is using the bishop fianchetto to later put pressure on these dark squares. After b3, bishop g7 was played. Now from the perspective of the king hunt, the central theme, this is a kind of King's Engine style setup, and Black later in the King's Engine often uses these pawns as a sort of battering ram to get at the white castled king. And we'll see that this occurs in this game. Bishop b2 castles, bishop d3. The interesting point here is that the knight hasn't developed yet to f3, and Meshtov makes his opponent a bit nervous perhaps about this by playing knight g4. He introduces not only ideas of bishop e5 and d4, but also ideas of bishop h6 here. So white actually played knight g e2, so it's a bit more passive potentially than on f3, and the queen can now come aggressively to h4. So already the king's sort of being hunted, and it hasn't even castled yet. If g3, then black could just go back with the queen, and he's created a weakness, so that would be good. So instead white plays knight g3, and now we see, actually, instead of bishop h6, which might be good as well, and Neshmetinov plays knight g e5. So he's reserving this idea for the moment of bishop h6, and the black knights are quite nice here, supporting each other. After castles, Neshmetinov starts to use these pawns in king's engine style as battering rams to get at the white king. So f3 was played, quite a passive move, and after bishop h6, queen d1, black has a very aggressive position now, and doesn't want to play bishop e3 check, perhaps because he doesn't want to leave the bishop there as a target for a later knight d5. He closes a bit the position with f4, but after knight g2, we see now g5. So the idea is clear, black has a very nice supportive queen here, supporting the g4, also, f4 is well supported by the bishop and rook, so the battering ram effect is quite powerful here. White plays knight d5, black just ignores it, g4. He doesn't mind dropping the c7 pawn, because g3 would be crushing. Let's have a quick look. Knight takes c7, g3, h3, and now the standard thing here is just bishop takes h3. A crushing blow because it just exposes the white king. This form pawn is a, and the queen are enough to make the white king here. White would have to play rook f2, just losing material with um, a lost position. So this can't be um, played. Knight takes c7. So white plays g3. But he's weakening the f3 square now. So black just took on g3 and played queen h3. The queen is difficult to evict from that h3 square. So Nezhmetinov is licking his lips here, potentially. After f4, he just plays bishop e6, a nice response. Because after f takes e5, if f takes e5, black would have bishop takes d5, gaining control of that e3 square. So after bishop e3 check, that would be mating, virtually. So, black couldn't, uh, so white couldn't take on e5. He plays bishop c2 instead. And now, this sort of plays rook f7. So he's sustaining um, the pressure and maybe um, protecting that, and maybe rook f8, and maybe the rook come to g7 if necessary in some lines. King f2 was played, so the king evacuation starts. And there's Metzlov, he plays queen h2 check, and after king e3, we see now a very interesting idea. Bishop takes d5. 
So gaining um, control to be able to play knight b4 now, uh, c takes d5, but still knight b4 was played. Even allowing this apparently dangerous skewer now with rook h1. But there's a brilliant move played here. I'll give you five seconds to see if you can spot it, starting from now. This messed off, he sacked his queen. He played rook takes f4, believe it or not. And we see here the power of the double check. Because after rook takes h2, we see a double check now from bishop and king, drawing the king up the board to the d4 square. And here, it seems as though Nezhmetsov played an accuracy. He played actually bishop g7, and maybe there was some hope of salvation from white by playing knight g1. Um, let's very quickly look at Ribka's recommendation here, which it shows that black did have a clearly winning position here. Either c5 or c6 is recommended. Uh, for example, c5 takes b5, covering the c4 square critically, and now threatening knight e takes c6 mate, to which white would have a hard time defending this. So say bishop d3, to, to provide a barrier to be able to play king c3, takes king c3, but the worst has only just begun now, because the bishop goes back on this diagonal. Check. Rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, and black is just clearly winning this. So that's just one example variation. In the game, though, bishop g7 was played. So maybe a slightly less accurate move than either c5 or c6. So what did white play here? White played a4, so he missed the knight g1, which was his only hope, I believe. And now, according to Ribka, there's a forced mate in 8. Um, Nezhmetsov does play the first move of that forced mate in 8. After takes, he plays the second move, b takes c6. So black uh, is, um, the white king is really in trouble here. Bishop d3 to try and shield on this third rank. And now, knight e takes d3 check. Nezhmetsov is playing the most accurate and logical moves to get this now mate in 6. After king c4, d5 check is played. So the king is lured further down the board to the b5 square now. So e takes d5, c takes d5. So this is the sign of a sure, surely good king hunt. The king getting lured further into your position. King b5, and now the rook comes to b8 check. And after king a5, black now plays knight c6 check. And the white king will be mated the next move if king a6, because of rook b8. Rook b8 to b6 mate. So here, after knight c6 check, white resigned. Let's have a look at this King Hunt game um, in overview and summary. So Black played an old engine defence and later played a very aggressive Queen H4. So proving that this Knight G3 is very passive. But furthermore, he uses his pawns now as a battering ram very aggressively to get in the move G4. And after this, White's really on the defensive. White creates a weakness with g3 and then tries to evacuate his king after this very aggressive bishop e6 is played. So fully exploiting this diagonal for the bishop because of the bishop takes d5 idea. And we see now, after rook f7, this desperate attempt to evacuate the king is refuted brilliantly now. Black playing bishop takes d5 here with the idea of this coordination of knight and queen now in a very tactical um, combination with rook takes f4. So rook takes f4, a completely brilliant and sound queen sacrifice. After rook takes h2, the king is drawn up the board and here c5 and c6 would be the most accurate but bishop g7, white blundered now by playing a4. So the king hunt was able to continue now. c5 check, and after d takes, b takes, black's threatening now c5 mate, mating with the pawn, because the king couldn't go to d5 because of this knight. So white desperately plays bishop d3 here, and after check from the bishop, 
king c4, d5 check, and the king's lured to the b5 square after e takes, c takes, king b5. And here it is a forced mate in free. Rook b8 check, king a5, knight c check, knight c6 check, and white has had enough. There's mate next move. So I hope you enjoyed this game. It's uh, one of the more brilliant Nezmetinov games following on from yesterday. And um, it just shows the power of um, the king hunt and, and king safety in general as a really critical factor. Regardless of how subtle your positional play becomes, the object of the game in chess is the checkmate. So um, I hope you bear this in mind and please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.